Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we've got some breaking news and I figured I would just do a very quick video on this because it is big fragrance news. And the other day I actually did a video on a private equity firm that came in and purchased Parfum de Marly and their sister house, Initio. Uh, so it's funny because all of these years, all of these influencers were trying to tell us that they were not linked at all. Sure enough, they are linked together. And so this private equity firm came in and purchased both brands together. And there's been some buyouts lately. Um, I think it's Manzanita Capital uh, came in and bought Byredo a couple years ago. Uh, I think that's the name of the firm. I might have butchered that a little bit, but uh, let's see. Byredo is owned by uh, Manzanita Capital. And they also own Diptyque, by the way. So these private, these uh, financial firms are really starting to get into the high-end niche market for one reason, and that's money. There is a lot of money. The markups on these expensive niche fragrances are through the roof. Unbelievable markups. And uh, it's a fast-growing segment of the fragrance market as well. And so um, you think about as people were sitting home during the lockdowns, the especially the really high-end brands like Roja and stuff like that really took off. And so uh, it's very interesting that the owner of Gucci which is a company um, called, I'll tell you in a minute, as soon as my brain refreshes, Kerig, K-E-R-I-G. So Kerig, who interestingly enough owns Brioni, and they also own uh, YSL. So they own um, Brioni, YSL, Kerig. Now they own Creed. And I have been a big fan of the old House of Creed, believe it or not. Even though many people uh, really, I would say, bash Creed fragrances for being too designer, too boring, too this, too that. I loved Creed when I when I really first got into fragrances. They were one of the houses that I really um, stuck to. It was Creed and Amouage for me early in my journey. And, you know, I bought stuff like Royal Water. This is really my second bottle of Royal Water. I guess I should put my light on. <clears throat> this is actually my second bottle of Royal Water. Green Irish Tweed. I just grabbed some of the bottles that were behind me. I didn't want to go mess with what was in the safe. Um, but, uh, you know, Aventus, of course. Now, this is what it's all about. And what's interesting is, I don't know the percentages, but I would guess that something like 70% of Creed sales is Aventus. And so if this, if this fragrance ever, um, really loses its luster. And what's interesting, you know what's so interesting about this is that BlackRock bailed on this deal. because, And for the longest time, I had, if you go watch my old videos, I said before I knew this was happening that, um, that BlackRock has no right owning Creed. Well, obviously they have a right, they have the money, but they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to leverage the brand. They don't know how to leverage the assets in Creed to make it worthwhile. They should have been releasing stuff like um, Green, Green Valley again. Or, you know, they should have been doing something like that to get people interested in the brand again. And said, the only thing they did while they owned Creed was release some, um, gosh, I don't know, they released some fragrance called Royal Wind or something. Uh, and then they also released uh, uh, a remake of Spring Flower, which is a fragrance that Creed did. You why, why remake it even? What's the point? So they released some remake, which was a nothing fragrance. And, uh, and then they bailed. And you know what? Honestly, bailing is maybe one of the smartest things that BlackRock did because they bought Creed for the luster and they bought Creed probably because of this. Probably my guess is somebody high at BlackRock wears this or or some Creed or, you know, um, you know, maybe this is like one of their signature scents or something, you know, one of those things. And they're like, we own everything. Hell, we might as well own Creed too. And they just bought them for whatever they paid, a billion dollars to Olivier Creed, which still pisses me off to this day. But um, uh, rumor is that sales that came in for Creed at the end of March, so, you know, a quarter or so ago, put them in about the $262 million a year category. So, you know, you can, so I, I bet you they ended up selling it for a little less than they paid, is my guess. Be, because I think since they purchased Creed, a lot has come out. A lot of the, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that falls under this book, the Ghost Perfumers book has come out. Creed, lies, and the scent of the century. People are starting to look into some of Olivier Creed's more outrageous claims. I mean, 
just the gall that he had to make some of these claims that, uh, you know, we made uh, Marie Antoinette's, fr or whatever crap he came up with, you know, the Queen of Spain from 1899 wore this, you know, you'll, you'll read stuff like that on some of the Creed website, and I think BlackRock came in, and they were like, oh shit, what did we just buy? What in the world did we just buy? What are we going to do? Uh, and so they put out their own sort of preemptive release saying, yes, the House of Creed goes back 229 years, but really the fragrance part of the house starts with Olivier Creed. Uh, and they almost had to like, they almost had to eat it. They almost had to just eat the dirt and, and um, you know, they had to, uh, they, they had to acknowledge the truth basically without acknowledging it, of course, because they, they're masters at that, but they pretty much made an acknowledgement. And after that, I think they didn't really see a way out of this, but here's what's interesting from this new house. So Kerrig is going to own Gucci, they're going to own Brioni, and they're going to own YSL. Now they're going to own Creed. That is four powerhouse labels for them. They, I bet you, my guess is that you are going to see Creed start pumping stuff out. Because these last three years or four years since BlackRock bought them, there's been nothing. I mean, no movement. They've just been living off of Aventus, right? Um, and as you guys know, I have a pledge to never buy any new Creed because I bought this. This is a 2018, 2017 bottle of uh, Silver Mountain Water, and it's in the new 100 mil bottle. I'll never buy another one. Absolutely not. No, they've lost me. They have completely lost my trust. They've lost the Rams' trust. And uh, they deserve to have lost the Rams' trust because of some of the stuff that they pulled. And so I have a no buy on any new Creed fragrances, no matter what they come out with. Even if they come out with a new Green Valley, as much as I would love an old bottle of Green Valley, I won't. I won't buy it. I won't. I won't give Creed a dime for what they basically did while Olivier Creed was selling the, the, the fragrance house. So um, just some interesting news I thought I would share because I think that Kerrig is going to take this in a direction that is more what you would have expected from somebody who bought Creed because BlackRock's just been sort of splitting, spinning their wheels. I don't think they had the connections. I don't think they knew the industry very well. They said they put together some amazing team who did this, but they did nothing in years. Um, and it's very telling that they bailed. And that tells me, because if it's such a high growth area, why did they bail? Why is BlackRock, one of the one of the firms who's like the squid, you know, they own everything. Why did they bail on such a high growth segment? Part of it is, I don't think they know how to leverage it. The other part is, though, I think some of the boisterous claims that Olivier Creed used to make that sucked some people in that believed it, you know, they saw bef before all this came out, there were people who believed Olivier Creed was the perfumer, right? There were people who believed that his great, great, great grandfather was making fragrances for King Henry. Uh, there, there were people who believed those things, right? And, and that got them to part with $300, $400, $500. You know, the price keeps going up. And um, I think some of those people now, the competition in this space has drastically changed. You know, Creed was the only one going back to like, if you went back to the 90s, there were really no other houses truly competing with Creed. There were stuff like Lartizan and stuff like that, but th that was a different crowd, not this boisterous, you know, um, I made this fragrance for the king of Saudi Arabia thing. No one was doing that back then. And now the industry is saturated with them. So the fact that BlackRock said, Peace, I'm out, really is telling to me. Uh, but I do think it'll be a good thing for Creed when all is said and done. However, I'm still just going to enjoy the bottles I have. I don't think I'll be buying any more Creeds. But I just thought I would share the news of Kerrig, uh, the owner of Gucci. Um, you know, as the CEO says, it marks a major step for Kerrig Beauty. And yeah, I think I think it absolutely does. Um, I think it, uh, it it absolutely does mark a major step for them. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, in the long run, you're going to, I think this will be a good thing uh, for Creed because I really feel like um, it was just, it, it, it literally turned into a dead end brand, like a dead brand with, uh, uh, with BlackRock. And, and what's interesting is, so the buyout of Initio and Parfums de Marly, uh, that, um, 
you know, private equity firm just bought like a con controlling stake so that they could make sure that the decisions were made mostly by them. Kerrig bought a 100% cash deal from BlackRock. BlackRock went out. Um, so it's very interesting. Just very interesting stuff for the fragrance lovers. Um, I don't think anyone's going to go run out there and try to buy any creeds right now because they're worried about what the future holds. In fact, I think it's the opposite. I think maybe now there will be more of a future for Creed because the thing to think about what's interesting is eventually this is going to die down, right? This can't continue because pretty soon the folks who, you know, the younger kids who come forward, they're not going to want to smell like their uh, parents or their older uncle or, you know, they're going to want to smell like themselves. They're going to want to have their own type of smell. And so while this was such a big hit, and this is one of the fragrances that really got me into the fragrance community. Um, I love Aventus. I have three bottles of this stuff, all older like this. And once the juice is gone, I will not be buying more. Um, you know, that's that's it. it. Once it's gone, it's gone. I'm going to wear what I have and that's that. But um, this, you know, this, this trend is already long in the tooth. It's 2023. This was 2010. Uh, now, it took a while to really catch fire. I think it really caught fire about four or five years after the release. I mean, it was it was big in in 20... Uh, I started wearing it in 2012. So it was big in, in 2010 and 11, but more with sort of the... I don't even think Creed thought this would be as big of a hit as it was. Um, and so it, it is interesting, though. I think BlackRock knows that when you've got a one-trick pony like this, that it just won't last. And so they're just, they're bailing. So, but I do think it makes sense for all parties involved. I think this will be good for BlackRock. They can take their money and go buy some of whatever they're gonna buy when, uh, not that they need more money to do that. But, uh, and I think Kerrig, uh, Creed will be in a, in a place where they'll be able to actually try to unlock some of the potential of the brand, as they say. So anyways, let me know what your thoughts are on, on the Kerrig deal. I just wanted to, share this little very interesting bit of news. Uh, thanks to my commenters for pointing this out to me. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think of the House of Creed. Do you think it's a dead brand? Do you think there is a chance for a revival? Uh, um, do you think who owns it makes any difference? So anyways, cheers guys. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.